Good morning, friends. I'm Stephen Benoon. You are watching Israeli News Live, and this is going to be a very um, blunt message today. And I think it's time that we stop playing church and really get down to business. We are certainly living in the very last of days. There is so much information that is coming out at, at amazing speed that there's not much more time, uh, especially for those that are believers in Christ. The, the days of persecution are certainly at our doorsteps. And those that intend on persecuting us are rapidly preparing for the Antichrist arrival, which they will call the true Messiah. We are seeing ministers that have embraced uh, Judaism, uh, Talmudic Judaism, and applying scriptures that have been fulfilled 2,000 years ago to events that are yet to transpire. And I was also guilty of that at one time. However, in my Zionist view, I never was interested in seeing that the Christian people would go underneath Talmudic Judaism. It was always my desire that my Jewish ancestors would come out and recognize Jesus Christ to truly be their Messiah. That's always been my desire and still is to this day. It is still my desire. But as I've watched this, this movement of ministers uh, ministers, some of them friends of mine, some of those very well-known ministers that are very much acquainted to the work that we do here as well at Israeli News Live. But I have slowly but surely uh, have seen how that the people and these ministers and how they have been leading their flocks uh, slowly but surely, allowing almost as if it were a disease to take a hold of the people into believing that we as a Christian body uh, must alter our views, that, that Jesus somehow or another, because he was uh, born in, in the Israelite nation 2,000 years ago, that uh, he was a keeper of all the law, that he, uh, that he had embraced even Talmudic teachings and that this was who he was and that we need to be underneath these Talmudic rabbis of today because after all, they know better uh, what we should, what, 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 how we should be preparing ourselves uh, for this final end day, which is nothing further from the truth. Uh, and I know that there are many that believe, well, Jesus kept all the law. No, he didn't. He didn't keep all the law. All right. I hate to I hate to break that to you. I think one of the most profound and most provocative of all the laws that is obvious that he did not keep is when they brought the woman that was guilty of adultery. Uh, they, the Pharisees brought him to tempt him and throw him at her feet and said, you know, we caught this woman in the very act of adultery. Now, there's a whole bunch of men standing there. So there were a lot of witnesses to what happened. And um and they said, you know, Moses commanded in the law that such a woman like this is to be stoned. What, what say you, master? That's what they said. What say you, master? And Jesus said, whichever one of you that is among you without sin, let him cast the first stone at her. Now, they were each convicted in their own hearts. So one by one, they all went away. Right. What, what I find interesting is, though, is that Jesus was not. He did not, there was nothing that would have convicted him in his heart of sin, that he did something wrong. So in essence, in order to keep the law, he would have been required to stone this woman and put her to death. In fact, I also mentioned too many times before, they should have brought the man as well. Where was the man? Because both are to be stoned according to the law. But Jesus did not stone her contrary to the law, which he did not keep. But why? Because he was not after the order of Aaron. He was not after a Levitical law. Jesus was after the priesthood of Melchizedek, according to what uh, David wrote in the Psalms 110 verse 4. There ariseth a priest after the order of Melchizedek, and that's who he was. That was a priest of mercy. 
And this is what we have need of in this day. But now getting back to the point that I really wanted to make, though, and that is, is I'm watching the things that are unfolding more and more, even some of my dearest friends that I have had, I am watching them becoming more afraid to speak the name of Jesus. They get amongst these uh, Talmudic teachers of Israel. I know they call them rabbis, but quite frankly, as Jesus said, call no man on this earth rabbi. And I've been guilty of doing that because the word rabbi doesn't mean teacher. It means master. And we have one master and that's Jesus Christ. But nonetheless, they love to be called rabbi. And as Jesus said, they love to be called rabbi and to be, you know, spoken about in the streets and stuff like that. Nowadays, it's not in the streets. They just speak about us on the internet. Why not? Speak about us on your YouTube channels and on your television programs and, and things like that. They love that. Uh, they like the praises of men. And, and the, what's sad is that ministers have totally forgotten the gospel that was preached uh, 2,000 years ago by the early apostles, by Jesus, by John, by Peter, uh, by Paul, by, by, you know, Jude, you know, you name it, we have the evidence of how the gospel was preached. And my thought is, is that we're not helping my own kindred. I mean, I am descendant of of the same Jewish people of 2,000 years ago, that's where my family come from. At least my mother's side come from the house of Judah. My father was from the house of Israel uh, because my father was from the tribe of Ephraim, or at least that's the family history or the family story. Who knows? We may have been from some other tribe. Nobody really knows what tribe they're from, uh, with the exception of the Orthodox Jews. They know they are from the Pharisaic line from 2,000 years ago. That is the boast of every Orthodox uh, rabbinical teacher that I am aware of. But what concerns me, though, is as I watch what ministers are doing, afraid to speak the name of Jesus, won't dare say it in front of anybody, even like in, what was it, 2018, when they declared uh, Jerusalem the capital, and John Hagee on May 14th goes and gives this long dissertation there, but never one time the name of Jesus spoken whatsoever. Uh, and, and then Lori Cadoza Moore comes out, and, and she uh, helps facilitate the crashing of God TV in, in Israel because they dare to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Jewish people on television, uh, you know, to give them a hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then calling them anti-Semitic because, uh, you know, of what they're doing, trying to win Jews to Jesus Christ, you know. And, and so I call on these. I mean, Lori, another, she, Lori is a, was a very good friend of ours. But what has happened to people like this? What, have ha what has happened to the ministers and why have they been so, as Paul said, who has so easily bewitched you? Well, you have to remember, Jude clearly identifies there were those that crept in unaware. Right? Unaware. Now, I've been accused now by friends of mine, in fact, that are ministers. I've been accused of being into heresy and false doctrine and things like that. Well, if it's heresy, then you'll have to take it up with people like... Uh, <laughs> like, like like Jesus himself, because Jesus and, and many of the others in the Bible clearly identify who they are, right? But but Paul, or Jude, excuse me, Jude, what did Jude say here? Jude said he was writing to, to the apostles there, or to, to the people there, and he said, you know, beloved, I, I gave all diligence to write unto you the common salvation is needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. So I'm about to share with you that faith that was once delivered into the saints. And as I say these things, I want to also let you know, after this message today, I am really going to start preaching the gospel to try to win my people that are among these ungodly ones that are there. Because there no doubt is still souls to be saved whether they be Jewish or not, Gentiles, it doesn't make any difference to me. We need to preach the gospel and we need to do it the way it was 2,000 years ago. But anyway, Jude says like this, for there are certain men crept in unawares through you, th though you once knew this, how that the Lord having, I'm sorry, uh, 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 
crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and Lord Jesus Christ. All right. They crept in unaware. And this is what really gets me is that people do not realize that they are creeping in even today. There has been Pharisaic teachers that crept into the church that have, that have brought in such damnable heresies to cause you to leave your first love. To so water down the gospel of Jesus Christ that you didn't dare mention it to the Jews. And why? Because those damnable ones that have crept into the churches and became teachers and ministers and things of that nature there. I'm not saying all these ministers are, 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 are guilty. I just think some of them are lost and have been deceived. But the ones that did creep in that were from a Pharisee, from a Nephilim bloodline. Not the Pharisee, not all Pharisees are Nephilim, okay? Not that that's completely not true. But there is a remnant even into this day, as Jude said, who were who were foreordained to this condemnation, and they're still creeping in among you. Even as the Rothschilds and Rockefellers that created the state of Israel, but they brought in teachers into the church. To deceive you. Why? Because they know that in Israel, the state of Israel today, there are Jewish people there that would believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. So what they want to do is make sure they silence you, that you don't say a single word. Because why? It's anti-Semitism if you do. And as my wife brought out in that message the other day that, that we spoke on, and I need to put that part that she said, just separate it by itself. She said, anti-Semitism is synonymous with anti-Christ because it's reversed the other way around. They claim it for themselves, but it's actually the other way around. They are anti-Christ because they're replacing Jesus Christ and putting themselves in the place of Jesus Christ. And as we know, Shapira is very guilty of doing such types of teachings. All right, now... So I don't wear you out for, for a long dissertation here. Let's back up and let's take a, a look at how the gospel of Jesus Christ was originally preached 2,000 years ago. I want to start off just from John himself when he first came out, before Christ had even began his ministry. In John chapter, excuse me, Matthew chapter 3, it says here, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid under the root of the trees, and therefore every tree which bringeth forth not good excuse me, bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast in the fire. John wasn't playing church, was he? Alright? Now he wasn't saying they couldn't come, but he was letting them know you need to bring forth fruits, meat of repentance. Don't just come here out of your little curiosity deal, come here in sincerity. Then you have Jesus. For example, in Matthew 15, verse 3. And by the way, as I go through these, if you want to take these messages that were preached 2,000 years ago and put it in the lens of today's teachings that are going on in churches now, and they're talking about their anti-Semitism, every one of these messages would be considered anti-Semitic based on today's definition. It says here, but he answered and said, wait a minute, what, let me back up just a little bit here. Then, Jesus, then came Jesus to the scribes and Pharisees, uh, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash, excuse me, then came to Jesus, scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered, being Jesus, unto them and said, 
Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? By the way, the tradition is the Talmudic teaching. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But you say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father and his mother, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandments of or the commandment of God of non effect by your tradition. You hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draw nigh unto me with their own mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And yet, as I want to pause here for a moment, and yet today you have ministers, right? Especially in the Messianic community saying that the law is going to go forth from Jerusalem, putting the scripture that is fulfilled 2,000 years ago as a future fulfillment. Like Zechariah 8, they will take a hold of the skirt, 10 people of the nations will take a hold of the skirt of him as a Jew and say, come and show us, teach us your ways. We hear that God is with you. Well, hello, friends. Let me tell you something. That was fulfilled by Jesus Christ also, on the day of Pentecost, 120 were them, that, had, that God was with them. That was the them that they were with. And the house of Israel, according to Acts 2.36, was there. And they said, they were pricked at their heart. And they said, men and brethren, what must we do to receive the, the, the this, this Holy Spirit? And Peter wasn't playing church either when he was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ either. And he preached Jesus Christ crucified on the cross and the resurrection and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he, he says to them, You're, you teach doctrines of the commandments of men, but you want to take people like <laughs> Shapira and, and Biltz. You're out there telling the people that we have a lot to learn. We can go sit up underneath the, these uh, teachers, uh, these rabbinical teachers, and learn something from them. Jesus, Jesus condemned their teachings. And he called to the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, know that which goeth into the mouth defile, defile excuse me, knoweth, goeth into the mouth defileth them. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Right? In other words, what you're eating with dirty hands ain't gonna make you ain't gonna cause you a problem. But what your mouth is running out there with this oral law, that defiles you. That's what he's saying. Then came his disciples and said to him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? They were actually getting kind of dumbed down like the ministers of today, which granted they didn't have the Holy Spirit. And Jesus says. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. So see, Jesus wasn't playing church. He said it like it was. He condemned the Talmudic teachings right there on the spot. They said that because his disciples didn't have the Holy Spirit yet, so they said, well, you know, the Pharisees, oh, they were offended, Jesus. Jesus said, Straight up to him. Every plant that my heavenly father didn't plant is going to be rooted up. In other words, if they're not from him, because you got to remember, they claim later, oh, because Jesus called them a bunch of serpents. They said, we were not born in adultery. They knew what adultery was. They knew adultery was when the, the priest had sex with these Nephilim uh Canaanite, Perzite, Jebusite women that were over in Babylon and produced children by them. But they were trying to say, we were not from them. Well, maybe they were, maybe they weren't. Jesus said they were because he called them use generation of serpents, which was the Nephilim bloodline. It was a serpent, a reptilian bloodline. All right. Now, Jesus, that's why he says, though, every plant that my heavenly father didn't plant shall be rooted up. And then he said, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. And the sad thing is, is now today you have the same problem. You've got people that have, that have professed to be Christians following underneath them. And Jesus told you they were blind. But, oh, they got something to teach us. What? 
The gospel is to go to them, not the other way around. Matthew 23, another one by Jesus. I give two for Jesus, and then we're going to look at some others here. Now there be you called masters, for one is your master, even Christ, but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall... Uh, that shall that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you them that are entering to go in. If that's not a prophecy of today, I don't know what one is. Because these Pharisees of two thousand years ago are here today; they're children. You remember how they, and, and let me let me make a point of this here for a moment, because when they were there with Jesus, they said, if we'd have been the days of our fathers, we wouldn't have been guilty in, in, in the blood of the prophets. And Jesus said, well, fill up the measure of your fathers. In other words, you just admit it, that's your daddy. And sure enough, that's exactly what they did. They crucified Jesus Christ anyway. And after they got down with Jesus, they hunted down all the believers they could find and killed them too. Okay? But Jesus says here, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, right? They're not going in, and neither suffer you, ye them that are entering to go in. That seems to be more prophetic than anything else I've ever seen. What, what, why do I say that? In other words, Christians today that are following the Pharisaic teachings of today are meant to have gone in as, what is it, Paul said, you did run well. What did hinder you? It's because you got underneath the Pharisaic doctrine and now you're afraid to say the name of Jesus Christ and you've gone into all kinds of idolatry as a result. And yes, it is idolatry. You begin to worshiping the state of Israel, something God did not ordain, that's idolatry. Jesus says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses and for pretense make long prayer. Therefore you shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, Pharisees, scribes and hypocrites, for you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. When he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. So when you become their proselyte, you see what Jesus says. In other words, when you become their convert. For example, those that become Noahides under the Noahide laws, you are a proselyte of Phariseeism and you become twofold more child of hell than they themselves. Why? Because you knew the gospel of Jesus Christ and you walked away. That's why the scripture says, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. It's not good, friends. And we know verse 23 in, in Matthew 23. Woe well, to you Pharisees and scribes, hypocrites, for you pay tithe. Wait a minute, I'm sorry, that's not the one I was thinking about. Uh, going down to verse 28. Outwardly you appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe well, unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets, garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would have not been partakers with the blood of the prophets, as I said a moment ago. Wherefore, you be witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill you up the measure of your fathers. What, do, what, do, what does he claim they are and their fathers? Serpents? Generation of vipers? See? The ones that were not like that came out. Let's take a look at some scriptures, though, that kind of show us how the gospel was meant to be preached. Now, this is from, let me see here, I think, um, yes, in Acts chapter 7, you remember when Stephen began to preach the gospel to the Jewish people. If, you, if we started around, well, all the way down through the chapter, he begins to recite to them uh, the different stories going from Abraham all the way down to Moses. Verse 34, for example, he says, I have seen and I have seen the affliction of my people, which is in Egypt, and I have 
heard their groaning, and am coming down to deliver them. And now come, and I will send thee unto Egypt. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and deliverer by the angel which appeared to him at the in the bush. All right? So, God hears the groaning of the people, but the people are already condemning him. You have to understand why. Because there was a remnant there. There was a remnant he was sent to. And so that remnant is what really comes out. And that's what we have today. Even in Israel today, there is still a remnant that will believe. But the thing is, is we need to be taking them the gospel now. Now is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not next week. Now. Drop down to verse 39. To whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him uh, from them, and in their hearts turned back, turn back again into Egypt. This is where he's talking about how they did with Moses. Saying unto Aaron, Make us gods to go before us, for as for this Moses which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we know not what became of him. And they made a calf in those days, and offered sacrifice unto the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hand. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven. As it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, how, uh, have you offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of 40 years in the wilderness? Yea, you took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your God, Rempham, figures which, notice this, figures, like figurines, which you made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. <laughs> My goodness. You know, by the way, this whole thing where they give up to the host to worship the host of heaven. And that's these archons. These demons and stuff. And do you know that even in some of the synagogues that have been unearthed in Israel by archaeologists, they find laid on the, on the inscription on the floors, these zodiacs and stuff like that, and and even the the uh, the, the scholars of, of, of Israel, like uh, Rachel, I can't think of Rachel Halil, I think is her last name. She is a professor at the University of Haifa. She mentions about this. How could they be involved in such idolatrous things when we know that the commandments were against this? But yet they find in some of the most obscure passages in the Talmud that. Even the Talmudic rabbis were saying, as long as you don't bow down to them, it was okay to put those in the temple. <laughs> you see, it's just, it comes from their fathers. Right? Now we go further down, verse 47. But Solomon built him a house, howbeit the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. What else will you build me, saith the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? And then watch, watch how Stephen speaks to the Jewish people of his day. Right? He's not doing like these ministers today that, oh, don't say the name of Jesus. We're just going to be friends with the, with, with, the, with the rabbis of Israel. Right? You stiff-necked and uncircumcised and heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets have, your, have, have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which should before uh, of the coming of the just one, of whom you have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven, saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And they cried with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord, cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, saying, The Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, The Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. He still cared about them and asking mercy for them. Why? Because he knew that not all of them would be, were really guilty in their hearts. Let's take a look in the book of Romans. This is Paul speaking here. Verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 17. Behold, thou art called a Jew, resistest uh, in the law, restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God. 
and knowest his will and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law, and are confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind and a light of them which are in darkness. Notice that Paul, Paul said you're the guide of the blind. an instructor of the foolish and a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and the truth in the law. Though therefore, excuse me, thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself that thou preachest a man should not steal? Dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou not commit sacrilegious, sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. For circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteous of the law, shall not his uncircumcision, uncircumcision be counted for circumcision. And shall not the uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee who by the letter of and circumcision dost thou transgress the law? For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit, and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of God. So Paul didn't play games either. And if you realize what Paul is speaking about here, it's because the oral law is trumping everything that was written in the law. He's saying, just like what Jesus said, you know, it says in the word of God, honor your father and mother, and the one that doesn't, you put them to death. But you say, by oral law, Talmudic law, if it's to be one to be profited by me, then it's okay, let them go, it's no problem. Peter, look at Peter, what Peter says, right? Chapter 2, 2 Peter chapter 2. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be even evil spoken of. They're doing that today. Ministers are speaking evilly of the truth today. And through covetousness shall they, with feigned words, make merchandise of you. It's about what's happened. They've made merchandise of you. You just become a way to purchase everything. They might as well be shoe salesmen. Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spare not the angels that sinned and cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved into judgment, and spare not the old world, but save Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, and condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that are after should live ungodly, and deliver just lot, vexed the filthy conversation of the wicked, for the righteous man dwelled among them, and seeing and hearing, and vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Okay? Two more I want to share with you. In 1 John chapter 2, John says here, Little children is the last time, as you have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have written not, excuse me, I have not written unto you because you know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is the Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. What are they doing today, friends? They're trying to tell you that Jesus, like for example, we hear uh, Shapira likes to go out and say, when people talk about Jesus was the son of God and we make a major ordeal over it because why? He is. He is the, He was the only begotten son of God. He is true, the son of God. But then he takes the scripture 
that apply to Jesus and he puts the modern day children of Israel in that place and he says, we are all sons of God. According to what John just wrote here, that's an antichrist spirit. When you take the scriptures that were applied to Jesus Christ and the fulfillment thereof, like Zechariah 8, when they take a hold of the skirt of a Jewish man, that was Jesus Christ. When you put Israel in that place, that is an antichrist spirit. We're going to read verse 23, chapter 2 of 1 John. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Let there therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. So those that are doing those type teachings, friends, are those that are seducing you. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you. You realize what he's talking about in verse 27? You don't need to go sit underneath a Talmudic teacher. This is why they say that. Okay? Now, in closing, because see, people think that if you go into a synagogue or something like that, you go amongst the Jewish people, it's anti-Semitic to dare mention the name of Jesus. We don't want to offend the Jewish people because after all, they've been labeled as Christ killers. I'll tell you this, just like Jesus said. Jesus said, your fathers did that. Now, we don't know who's who. And that's what Jesus also said to us. But every tree that, whether it be, if it was planted by God, then God will take that to himself. If it's not, it'll be rooted up. Satan has planted a lot of false seed on this earth. If you want to take that spiritual, I'm okay with that. If you want to take it literal, that's okay with me as well. I don't care which way you take it. But it's written all through the Bible. But I want to show you how the early apostles spoke the gospel of Jesus Christ after his resurrection. If we turn to the book of Acts chapter 5, and you should, you really need to go back and read the, the book of Acts. Really, I think it'd do you a lot of good, but especially the chapter 5. And I'm not going to read the whole thing. Just go, I'm going to start at verse 17. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with, with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, that's what they write in there, sect of the Sadducees, were filled with indignation. Wait a minute, let me see if there was something I meant to do. Okay, yeah. And laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Where? In the temple. Today they don't have a temple as of yet. So you can speak it even in the synagogue. In other words, if you're invited there, speak it. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came and they that were with him and called the council together and all the senate of the children of Israel sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety and the keeper standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. And when the high priests and the captains of the temple, the chief priests, heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without, brought them without violence, for they feared the people as they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree, him hath God exalted in his right hand to be prince and savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witness of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey him. 
When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Then stood up in the council a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had a new reputation among the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Theodosius, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain and also made many as, as obeyed him were scattered. So Gamaliel goes on into saying, If this be of naught, it'll come to naught, right? But the thing is, it didn't come to naught. So the gospel of Jesus Christ that has swept the world and is alive into this day, and there are still those that are willing to stand for the gospel of Jesus and not afraid to say the name of Jesus Christ regardless. And as it, as it was said by Peter and them, we ought to rather to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. This is why they were doing it. Not to sit there and condemn them, but that they might have life, that they might have salvation of souls. But the thing is, if you obey men and you close your mouth and say not the name of Jesus Christ to the Jewish people of today, then you will have robbed them of the only hope of salvation that they could ever possibly have. Because as it is written, this same Jesus Christ was made a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. How dare you then, ministers, rob the Jewish people of the gospel of Jesus Christ and to be silenced by the Pharisees because you have not the courage to stand for the Savior, Jesus Christ. This I will not do. And we will continue in this house to speak the gospel of Jesus Christ as it was by the early apostles. You want to win the Jewish people to Christ. That's what you need to do. If you have gone in the other direction, I encourage you to repent and come back to your first love as it is written in the book of Revelation. That's what God had against many of the people. You had forsaken your first love. But he gives you time. We are in a very late hour, friends. A very late hour. They will bring about the destruction of the world. They will bring about the collapse of the economy. And then they will begin to hunt down those that stand for the truth, to destroy them and to kill them. While those of you that have fallen bewitched by the spirit, this ungodly Pharisaic spirit, yeah, you'll have your little short little revival that you call a revival, but there will be no Jesus Christ in that revival. There will only be an Antichrist spirit. And there will be no more sacrifice for your sins if you don't turn into Antichrist. I'm Stephen Benin with Israeli Muslim.